What's going on here is much more complex than that. Can we skip this? Like, hit the skip button or something? Oh, you don't want to skip this. Yes, we do. Hello there. Sir from 17 once again. This is my South Park, the Stick of Truth. Hardcore difficulty walkthrough. We're on the mission Attack the School, and this is a pretty long one considering the last few missions have been incredibly short as we siege the, the school and we take down Cartman. So the first thing that's going to be happening is we have a, a bit of new gear. The, the, the one that's really worth noting is the knife. We've got a throwing knife. I'm going to be putting some attachments on it to make it better, to essentially make it what the darts were before we, we gave up using the darts for stronger weapons. And the next sequence is going to be a series of environmental challenges where you can either kill people or uh, with the environment or you can fight them. And I'm hopefully going to be using as much of the environment as possible. And then it's going to lead up to a boss fight with Butters and then the penultimate fight against Cartman. And both of the bosses are very simple, especially with the, the elemental stuff we're going to be hitting them with. You know, bleed and burn are just incredibly powerful. And you're not going to have access to the the human allies, so you're only going to be able to use the likes of Stan and Jimmy, and Jimmy's got a really low life, and I just, I don't think Jimmy's that great as a, as a buddy, but you need him at the beginning to open the handicap sign for some reason, and you'll notice how I talk to these guys, I check to make sure there's nothing here, and then I'm going to use Jimmy to, to open the thing, because the stairs last time were clear. And I wondered if I had to fart on them, but it turns out I have to use Jimmy because it's a, a co-op moment. There you go. <laughs> Such a, a, a trivial moment, but I suppose it adds a, something to it. Inside here is a gym Pokemon, and you've got to turn the gas on and fart into it to blow open the cooker. Like that. Moon, And it's Donkey Tron, which if you watch the episode, that's one of the ones they featured. Which is one of my favourite episodes of South Park. So funny in so many ways. But you'll notice that the school's been really jacked up. And there's going to be a lot of opportunities to to interact with the environment. And I think this is when South Park, the stick of truth, is at its best. And there's only one dungeon on the game I don't enjoy, and that's the sewers. And it's an optional one. The sewers just doesn't really have anything too fun to interact with. It's just kind of a, a sequence of of non-linear pathways that, that lead to ladders. Like, these dungeons are great because there's just so many little bits of detail and things you can spot and you can use. But the sewer just is a little bit lacking for me personally. But over here there are injured people. If you were with the humans you could heal them with butters. But in this particular instance we're not going to be able to. So I hit the, the light to electrocute his friend. And then you, if you hit the pipe, it'll flood the water so it electrocutes the rest of them. But you can't do it from inside the vent, obviously. So there it is. There's the next one down. And then this one is so scared that you can just whack him. And that's the end of combat. Also, if you're curious as to what the messages are that pop up in the top left... Because you're constantly on Facebook when you enter your menus, you can see what everybody's talking about, and it's just kind of social media stuff, and you know, a bit of satire on on people thumbing up comments and statuses. There's even a nice funny joke with Al Gore being super clingy and wanting you to like his Facebook stuff. But here's the first fight. One of them is stunned, and this guy has a shield. The shield indicates that it's level three, which means we have to hit him three times before we can start damaging his life. Something really cool to know is the status effects will damage life regardless of shield, which is why bleed and burn and gross out are all so powerful. And I'm going to use a strength potion, a bit of weight gain on, on my main dude. And then from there he's probably going to be throwing some knives to, to build that bleed. But here comes Stan. Stan uses, well, I think all of the enemies, and sorry, all of the buddies in, in combat say stuff from the show. Uh, there's a lot of little gags that have happened in the show. And they use them during battle as, as sound clips. Which you might have noticed when you enter houses, whatever's playing on the television, if it's not a sequence from the show, like from the Queef Sisters episode where there's the, the lady on TV, like Martha Stewart, who's filling her vagina full of glitter so she can queef it out. <laughs> which is a dumb one. Or, or the radios. The radios are often playing songs from the, the TV show, be it... You know, Cartman's hand doing Jennifer Lopez impressions to 
to the I'm a little bit country and I'm a little bit rock and roll which is awesome when you're going all hippie and and all redneck against the war in Iraq as the Americans love to say because they somehow have something against saying Iraq <laughs> Look at the knife. Goodness me, the knife is good. Such a powerful tool. And there is another fight down. 52 experience. Now we can move on to the next area. Something I haven't mentioned, I don't think, is if it glows gold, it means you can interact with it. So look for gold. It means it can be opened. It's probably the way forward. And be careful of this sequence. Ooh, I might have to come back to the school to see what that does, because... I don't know if it lets you get anywhere cool. I don't think I've checked that. And that's the only problem with the game such as this. You see things when you're first playing, but you don't know what they are, and you can't remember where they were when you have the tools to use them. That's a, another sequence where I could have used the, the roof light to kill him if, if I wanted to. And down here will be Kyle. And there's a fight against the Hall Monitor Nazis, so... Here is a, a ton more of the Nazi zombie stuff, and this time it's ginger Nazi zombies. And they're using dinner trays as shields and rulers as weapons, which I thought was awesome. But they're all about to become victim of my throwing knife, because it's far too powerful at this point. So there is four bleed immediately on that guy, and then just use stand to, to deal some quick damage, and then let them kill themselves. Let's have a look what it does. He does the touch of ginger, which I'm going to guard, and he takes like over 400 damage from it. And he only has about 600 life, so it's it's truly powerful. There's a counter that only does 22, but it's cool because that did over 500 damage. Did over 600 damage, in fact. But it's it's such a a potent cocktail of bleed and fire. Especially compared to that. See, that, that was a heavy hit. And I appreciate that the, the dude is armoured, but still. A heavy hit, one damage, and they're killing themselves after they heal because of how much the the, the flame and the, the bleed is doing. It just seems a little disjointed. There we go. There's the end of the fight. So that gives us the Holy Hammer of Smiting, but we're not going to be using that because... In a short while, we'll be fighting Butters, and Butters is going to give us his hammer, and his hammer's actually really good. And uh, I didn't collect it the last time, which... I'm curious how you get all the weapons in the game. If you get Stan's weapon when you pick the Cartman path, and you get Butters' weapon when you pick Kyle's path. So how do you get both? Curious. I don't know the answer to that. Maybe you don't. Who knows? But a, a couple more environmental stuff here. Once again, you can use them to, to kill the gingers. I don't know if I'm going to be. There's the vent to take that guy out. And I opened this electrical panel, but I don't use it effectively to kill the ginger below. So I kind of waste this cup of fart. But not to worry. You know, I'm not too sure how interesting the combat is to watch, but it's really fun to play. So I'm kind of biased with it, I guess. But there's the electricity off, and that means we can now do this. Stun him with the knife. Ooh, that didn't stun him. Did it not miss? Did it not miss? Did it miss, sorry? It must have missed. Weird. But a cool thing about the game is, when you do kill them environmentally, when you go into battle, it shows you the people who were dead, who you killed environmentally, and they didn't have to do that. I mean, sure, it's annoying, because it means you can attack them by accident, but it's still a nice touch of detail. Now, these guys are going to use cheesy poofs, and then they're going to die. Oh, he's close to dying. Oh, he did die, see what I mean? That's how powerful these, these status effects are. They heal, and they still die. It's so much fun just, just wrecking them without doing anything. And it reminds me of how I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! at times, when I had a deck destruction... A destruction deck, I should say. A deck destruction deck. Which generally means uh, I just used to fuck people's cards. You know, I didn't focus on taking down life points. I focused on making them run out of cards. And it's a truly terrifying deck to play against. Because all the stuff you enjoy using, 
generally gets taken from you, so it's kind of really sad. But at the same time, it's undeniably powerful. But here's a couple more upgrades. I'm doing them more because the game annoys me when it flashes, you have upgrades. And I don't know why games do that. They don't just show it once and then let you, you know, continue. But at the same time, I know exactly why they do it, because it's easy to forget and there are a lot of stupid fucking people. But a good example would be Batman. Batman Arkham City, the upgrade got rid of the map, so it physically made it harder to navigate the city unless you upgraded, which I'll never understand that. That's just stupid. But Arkham Knight, baby, coming later this year. I cannot wait. Rocksteady are coming back to reclaim their chalice of quality. Because I think we can all agree, as, as cool and as fun as, as Arkham Origins was, it just wasn't as good as the the trilogy, or the the setup to the trilogy before it. Because Arkham Asylum is, is one of the best games this generation, in my opinion. Because I think they just... The level design and the way you traversed that game was flawless. It was so much fun, it was so interesting. And Arkham City is a great game, but... I think they got a little bit too ambitious with it, and it led to a less focused experience. And then the next one, I have no idea what's happening, but just think how long they've been developing it, and it's on the next console, so not only is it going to look phenomenal, but they've been working on it for, for what, four years maybe? And a four year dev cycle is really rare these days, and it either means it's going to be an absolute bag of dog shit like Aliens Colonial Marines or Duke Nukem, or it's going to be, you know, like a fucking Shenmue, it's going to be a masterpiece, so I'm really excited. But I was hoping it was going to continue the the Azrael quest thing, where he kept telling you that the world was going to end and you were the only person who could save it, but it appears it's following the, the crazy guy who stole Bruce Wayne's face. Bruce Wayne's? Bruce Wayne's face, sorry. But I hope it turns out to be that crazy sword-wielding awesome dude that was randomly on the, the rooftops, because he looked so fucking good, and you never did anything with him. You know, there were no challenges where you got to play as him. But there's, there's not too much information about the new one aside from apparently you get to play as Harley Quinn and apparently you get to drive the Batmobile, which I've been asking for drivable Batmobile since the Arkham Asylum because they made Batman awesome in everything he did except for the croc fight, which was too long. So I have faith that they can make a really, a really fun and poignant driving section that doesn't just have to be a driving section for the sake of it. But once he's opened the door for you, you can then hit it, but you've got to wait for, is it Dog Poo, I think his name is, to do it. And then through here is the boss fight with Butters. So Butters, he's pretty strong. He's got quite high life, he's got quite a lot of armor. And he's immune to being stunned, which is kind of annoying. But I don't remember this boss fight, which tells me that it's not that challenging. But then again, the only boss fight I remember is the Sparrow Prince. Sparrow Prince and Kenny. And Kenny only because he's bullshit. But... You'll notice there's a theme running here. I buff my characters to get buffs. I then bleed the status. I then build bleed for status effects. Building bleed builds fire. And then I just cash it in as I hit them with my hardest attacks. And the fights are usually over before they've ever had a chance to do much. There's also an item you've not seen me use called Speed Coffee, which gives you two turns. And I think it's a broken item, I really do, because if you know what you're doing, you can kill bosses before they get a turn. Like, if you start with full mana on certain bosses when you have the Nagasaki Fart, you can use Speed Coffee, get a buff... You can then proceed to fart, do massive damage, and then on the next turn you can heal your mana and fart again. And two Nagasaki's is pretty much enough to kill most bosses on this game, because it does 10,000 damage plus, and it hits a full group of people. So if you're ever having trouble with an entire group of enemies that keep killing you because there's too many, just use Nagasaki. The only problem is, you get Nagasaki really late when you come back from Canada, so there's only so many things you can really use with it. But here comes Butters doing some of his special moves. He's losing about 600 life every time he attacks. He only had 2,000 and he's already dead or beaten, we should say, because you can't kill Butters, he's too cool. 
But once he's down, you want to loot his body, get his hammer. And his hammer is pretty cool. And it should be around your level. And I mentioned on the first video that you shouldn't worry about not being high enough level to do things on the game. Because the main quests give you enough experience to make you strong enough to take on the area you're about to do. Like, I was literally almost the exact same amount of experience as I was when I did all the side quests at the very beginning of the game. It's really baffling how the, the game tracks the levelling. But This is an optional fight, you can completely skip this if you want to. But if you do so, you'll miss out on friending two of the South Park guys. They're the ones that just laugh and call things gay. Which <laughs> is pretty funny, because that's all they do. They just, you know, <laughs> it's gay. You're gay. <laughs> that's all they say. And uh, I, I blame them for my, my stance on using gay as a noun to, to repose for something silly or bad or funny. Yeah. Insensitive people. Super. Like, sorry, sensitive people get super incensed about the, the, the use of it. Which I don't get because people, you know, everybody's just waiting to be offended, it seems, at times. There's just. Is there not anything better to do in the day than ride a white horse with your white armor on, getting offended at things? You know, playing the fucking martyr? I'm busy, me. That's the reason why I, I'm. I don't respond to that kind of shit and I don't, you know. I don't do that stuff because. Where do these people find the time? It just don't make any sense. I'm always fucking busy, man. Always busy. Especially recently with all these releases that I'm covering. Like... Oh, wow. This is the fight I mentioned, guys. Sorry. You don't have to do this one. The last one you can probably avoid as well, but this is the one that's going to free the two guys who call things gay. And I don't know the names because some of the lesser characters, you know, they don't really reference them that often. But there's the mug. There's the stun, so both the enemies now are stunned, and we've got free reign to, to beat them up. You'll notice they're called KKK soldiers, which means they're part of the Cooper Keep Club, is it? I think it's called. That's what you get. Which is a great joke, because they have Token doing the, you know, he keeps making KKK jokes, which <laughs> it's just, oh, it's so good. But bound to insult and offend some people. Oh, this is an interesting one as well. Uh, for some reason, when you take a shit on these toilets in the game, it wants you to tap A, but you have to tap A really fast, and I'm not very good at tapping A, apparently, on, a, on an Xbox controller. Like, if this was a PlayStation controller, which I do believe have better buttons to tap, I would probably be able to do that every time, but on this game, I think I've done it twice, so I just don't do it. And it's crazy because the sequences in the game where you have to tap buttons, and I do those perfectly, but the toilet one is so fucking hard. Oh, it, it's, I just, I'm not a good fast tapper person. Oh, Lemo Winks is missable, by the way, guys. If you go immediately into the fourth grade room instead of the fifth grade room, you will never be able to get all the friends. So, it sucks balls because on my first playthrough where I've got like 90 friends, he's one of the ones I'm missing. So is Big Gay Al because I didn't answer the phone in, in Mr. Slave's colon. And that's, I think, another missable one. But something happened really strangely today. I was in the woods between Canada and South Park. And I summoned Mr. Slave against the, the wolves. And it gave me an achievement for summoning Mr. Slave while I was inside Mr. Slave. So I don't know what that's about because I, I wasn't there yet. I get the joke and I understand the achievement. I just assume I'd missed it. And then I summoned him randomly in the woods and boom, I got it. So, yeah. Pretty surprising. But after this particular area, there's one last fight and it's against Cartman. And it's really simple. Cartman does have some really powerful magic, but you will bleed him and burn him so quickly he doesn't have a chance to do them. So first turn I'll probably throw to build bleed. So he's got 4,400 life. There's immediately to 5 bleed, and he's burnt, and he's got defense down. So here he comes doing one of his moves, which slows us. And watch how much damage he's about to take. Look at that, man. 600 plus damage per turn when it's not even our turn. It's so good. There's me removing the debuffs. I'm going to do a, a mug on him to see if I can stun him. Probably going to be immune. Probably should have read. 
Yeah, he's immune. See what I could steal as well. You don't seem to steal anything unique from the enemies. It all seems to be junk. Junk and healing items. There's another 600 damage. Here comes a backstab to see what the damage on this will be. Like the buffs are do uh, the debuffs are doing more damage than I can do. It's crazy. Like after this, he's dead. Oh, and it's going to be a fart contest. So you have to tap here. And the end of this is brilliant. Look how awesome this looks. This happens twice in the game, and both times it looks awesome. God, that looks so good. Not quite as good as the one later on, who I'm not going to say who it is because it's a bit of a spoiler. But thank you for watching, guys, and you take care now.